I put ChatGPT, Google Bard AI, and Microsoft Bing AI to the ultimate test against each other, and I gave each one 10 different types of prompts to see who would come up on top. And I used both versions of ChatGPT, so you'll see the version that is free to everyone, and you'll see GPT-4 with web browsing in this test. I'm going to assign a score from one star to five stars for each different categories. I have five categories that I'm gonna rate all these AIs on. One is gonna be based on setup and how easy to use and some of the features it has built into it. Then I'll review helpfulness, accuracy, creativity, and finally speed. And I have these on split screen. So on one screen, you'll see on the right side, you'll see Microsoft Bing. On the left side, you'll see Google Bard. And then on this window, you'll see ChatGPT4 on the right side and ChatGPT 3.5, the free version on the left side. And with ChatGPT4, I do have internet browsing available, but I'm not gonna use the plugin since right now you can only turn one of these on. So let's start with ease of use. I wanna see how easy it is for anyone to jump into one of these and set it up and start using it. Bard is from Google, right? So you could access it at bard.google.com and billions of people already have a Google account. So they have a leg up because all you have to do once you go to this website is use your Google account to sign in. And since Google already has all kinds of different products that we all use like Gmail and YouTube, that makes it really easy for someone to sign into Bard with an existing account. And because of that, I'm just one click away from Googling something. I'm just one click away from composing a Gmail email and I'm one click away from exporting this to a Google Docs and saving my work for later. So that's gonna be really hard to beat. Now, Bing is a little bit more difficult to even start with because it requires the browsing on Microsoft Edge, which is the web browser. Google could be on any browser, right? So Microsoft Edge has to be installed. So if you're on a Mac, it does take a few extra steps that I covered in how to start using Bing. So doing that does limit how easy it is to use and set up. But they do have a really, really good app for iOS and Android that I've made a video about. So Bing does get a score there where ChatGPT and Bard currently are only web-based and do not have an iOS or Android app. And Microsoft Bing also has the search option. So inside the chat window, if you scroll down, you go to the search section. That is not very useful in my opinion because most of us are not using Bing to do our searches. We're Googling things, right? So this one does not really provide a benefit to me because if I wanted internet access to look up things like links, I'm still gonna use Google. So Google has the Google it option, but Bing basically just gives you Bing search, which again, a lot of people are not using all these years anyway. And Bing also has an option for you to choose a conversation style. So that makes it really useful because sometimes you wanna be more creative or more balanced or more precise. And when you give it a prompt, it also suggests follow-up prompts. So that is pretty unique. And I really like that because sometimes I don't know how to take the conversation to the next level or exactly what to put in my prompt box to follow up on that conversation. So this does help you. None of the other ones right now give you a follow-up suggestion. Now, what about ChatGPT? Is it easy to use? Well, ChatGPT also have a website at chat.openai.com. OpenAI is the company that makes ChatGPT. And Microsoft Bing actually is running ChatGPT version four. The latest version of ChatGPT is actually how Bing is operating. So they have a partnership there. So some of your answers, if you're using GPT-4, is gonna be similar to when you use Bing. But here you have 3.5 and you have ChatGPT-4 and they're rolling out new versions all the time. So it may be a different number by the time you see this video. But here's the problem with GPT-4, and I'm gonna compare GPT-4 with the answers for the rest of the test. GPT-4 is $20 a month. So that was no big deal. I have two paid accounts. But now that we have Bard and we have Bing that has GPT-4, that $20 a month seems a little bit steep, right? Because we have now two alternatives that are totally free. Again, GPT-4 also has a limitations on how many messages you could give it. Right now it says it caps at 25 messages every three hours. That's the only reason I started using Bard and Bing in the first place because I was hitting limitations on my paid service, right? But they do have cool things like internet browsing available. Again, those other things have that too. So that really takes 3.5 out of the race because without internet browsing with older data, right now the data set is from 2021. That makes it really not, not as usable as some of the other options. And you also have this cool plugin store. So there's a whole world of plugins 
it looks like the app store where you could download all kinds of different apps again called plugins for gpt4 that is something the other ones don't have so this gives it access to a whole different set of databases so that does give it a point but the way it's set up is not very useful because right now you literally have to choose between internet browsing the internet access gpt4 has and plugins and it's only available to the paid version of gpt so it is easy to set up most people already have an account but all these different limitations with it really do hurt it when it comes to comparing it to Bing and Bart. So the very first score, ease of use and features, I'm gonna give ChatGPT three stars for the limitations I talked about. I'm gonna give Bing four stars and I'm gonna give Google five stars. They definitely win this category. Next, let's test a few different prompts to test how helpful and how complete each of them are when it comes to giving an answer. So the first prompt I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna say compare ChatGPT 3.5 versus ChatGPT4 versus Bing versus Bard and see what it does. So ChatGPT 3.5, it keeps telling me that the knowledge cutoff date is September 2021. So a lot of these tools came out in 2023. So that makes the answer not very useful at all. So let's look at GPT-4 and it looks like it used the internet browsing option here. So this plugin kicked in and it tried to search the internet, but it's had difficulties again using the tool and it gave me some answers, but again, it's based on the cutoff date. So I'm gonna to try to regenerate the answer for this to see if it gives me something better. Now let's go back here. So Bard gave me a really good answer. I'm not gonna read it right now. You could do the prompt yourself, but also has different drafts. So I could click here and see these different drafts. And one of them right here has a whole table, which makes it really, really useful, right? So I could actually extend this out and look at this table. It tells me the different models I basically try to find. It gives me their language model, the data set, the size, right? As you could see, GPT-4 is way bigger than the other ones right now. And Bing is the same as GPT-4 because it's using the same model. It's gonna give you the capacity of them. It's gonna tell you the capability of them, the availability is gonna give you a lot more information. And you could use a combination. This one has bullet points. This one also has the table, but it actually did its own testing on accuracy, fluency, creativity. So this is a useful chart to compare them. Now let's go to Bing and see what Bing came up with. So this is the answer Bing gave me. So Bing does something unique. It actually credits where it got this information. So it does a web search basically. So it did a search for exactly what I typed and it found this information from some publications. And then it's gonna give you all the sources. So I do like that, although it makes it a little bit more messy. I do like that it's giving credit to where you got the information. And as usual, it does give you follow-up. And ChatGPT4 looks like it's working and it looks like it had the same exact problem as before with, again, telling you it has a cutoff date. Even though it tried to search the internet, something for some reason Bing was able to do, GPT was not able to do that and it's still going. But again, if I was to compare these on this version, Bard definitely is winning so far. So let's do a follow-up. Now I'm gonna say summarize this into a simple paragraph. So when it comes to summarizing text, it could take a large amount of information that it creates and summarizes them, or you could give it a large amount of text yourself. You could copy and paste into all these and ask for a summary, and they all do a really good job. So between ChatGPT, Bard and Bing, this is pretty equal when it comes to summarizing information. If you generated the information, obviously it's gonna have some problems summarizing something that wasn't accurate in the first place. But this time, ChatGPT4 also gave me some resources here. But now I'm gonna say, give me a detailed table and compare everything in a visual way. Okay, so same prompt, as you could see, Bard gave me a really nice looking table here. So I could see, again, all the things that it created from the first prompt, but now it put more, so it put cost, if it has a free or paid option, this is GPT-4 has a paid option. Pros, cons, best four. Very, very useful chart to look at in a nice organized way. Bing just didn't create one at all. It says it can't generate the table, but I could give you a summary. Well, we already got the summary, so this does not help. Sometimes it does work, but right now, in a live test, I gave it the same exact prompt as Bard, and it just gave me nothing. So let's look at GPT 3.5 and 4. So this time actually 3.5 did a better job. So it gave me a table that has Bard, Bing, and all four, right? But look at this one. It says, I couldn't find information on Bard AI, so it's not part of our chart. So that makes our chart not useful, right? We're trying to compare these three different models. If Bard is not in the race, again, 
because it couldn't fetch it. Same thing on the Bing side, right? Using GPT-4, they couldn't do it. And here they did it, but again, some of the information is gonna be a little bit out of date. And they all have this issue too that I should point out right now because I didn't do a test for it. So a lot of these have this issue with hallucination. They basically give you an answer that seems right, but it's actually not correct. So that is going to be a problem. We'll look at accuracy in a second. But as you could see, again, this is not very useful. In fact, Bing Chat also has a bunch of unknowns. If I go to Bard, it gave me a useful table of content. Here, Bard is going to get five stars and Bing and ChatGPT, I'm gonna give them three stars just because some of the other things they did well, like summarizing it, explaining it like I'm five years old, those type of prompts they did really well in the table generation part. And because the data is just not available to them, they just couldn't get the right information to me. So again, Bard wins this category too. Next is gonna be accuracy. The very first basic test on accuracy, I'm gonna give it a complex math problem. I'll give it to Bard, Bing, and ChatGPT and see what it comes up with and how it breaks up the work. So I gave it a math problem that's differential equation from my son's homework and it's pretty complicated, but it looks like Bard actually gave it to me for some reason in code snippet. So I could copy it right here using the copy, but it shows up in this kind of format. But again, they do have different drafts. So if I wanted to mix it up and get the simple version of it, this is it. So this time I'll just use the first one because that's the one that showed up by default, but you can look around in the different drafts. That makes it really useful. It doesn't have to generate every time. And this is the answer it came up with, which is the correct answer. It looks like this version two on the Bing side also came up with the same answer, but it's really interesting because this actually didn't give me any of the work, right? It just gave me the result. In this case, again, the same prompt, this in every version of it gave me some version of how it got to that answer. This is a very detailed version of it that got to that answer as well. On the chat GPT side on 3.5, again, it gave me the right answer and it showed me ton of the work in a really easy to understand way. And on the four, on GPT-4, it also gave me the answer. It did not show me ton of the work though. So I could again, try to use the free version to get more of the work or just ask it a follow-up question to give me the work. So the accuracy, which is what I was testing out, not completeness, is all correct when it comes to doing things like this. Again, this is a little bit more of an involved math problem, but it did a really good job very quickly giving me an answer across all four. My second prompt for accuracy is gonna require real-time data. So I'm gonna ask it how much the Super Mario movie has made so far. So Bard gave me a pretty up-to-date answer. So if I went to Box Office Mojo on Google and looked this up, this is pretty close. It's within a couple of days of the total box office of the Super Mario Brothers. And on the big side again, exactly where I need this to be, very close and it gave me the sources. If I wanna read more, I could go to variety.com for example. This got the information, it looks like the source is Wikipedia. So this time, he actually showed me the source. Again, I could Google it to learn more or I could go to the search tab in the Bing side and learn more about it this way. So that is useful. Let's go to ChatGPT. So now here's where ChatGPT again falls behind on the free version. So if I was comparing just all the free ones, ChatGPT would completely lose because it just can't answer that. But again, this is something you may just use Google or Bing for anyway, not even the AI. You could just do a Google search. I just wanted to show you this limitation. But on GPT-4, as long as you have web browsing available and activated, it found the answer very, very quickly using this web browsing option. So it did, again, give me an accurate answer. So the only limitation here, again, is the free version of ChatGPT not being up to date on this information. But again, when it comes to scoring these, I'm gonna give Google and Bing a five star, but again, I'm gonna give ChatGPT just three stars because if I was to use the free version, or a lot of times this web browsing version takes a little bit longer, it doesn't find the right answers quickly. So that is definitely not going to be up to par against Bing and Bart. Let's actually see how creative each one of these are. Now I'm gonna ask it to create a mid journey prompt, which is a text to image generation platform. I have different videos about, but I'll ask it here to create me a prompt for mid journey. So here's the prompt it came up with on the Bing side is this is basically the prompt. It's a little bit on the long side, but I'll go ahead and take it. And I'm gonna give the mid journey bot that prompt. On the Bing side, you give me multiple different prompts and they're pretty short. So I could basically take this information. This is all the prompt 
that it wrote for me and I could choose between these. So it didn't give me one. And then it gave me some tips. I did not ask it for some tips, but it gave me some tips on exactly what to do to get the best results. On the chat GPT side, it gave me a very complete mid journey prompt. It has location, lighting, poses, expressions, props. So way, way, way more than I need, but let's see what it comes up with if I copy and paste that. And again, GPT-4 gave me a long description as well. So I'll just take one of these to show you what this came up with. Okay, let's see the result. Here we have Bing. So Bing gave us this prompt that gave us these four different images, pretty good. Now this one is barred. Again, I left it kind of open to see what they come up with, right? So I didn't give it a lot of prompts here. And this did a pretty good job too. In this case, I think actually Bing did a better job creating something more ultra realistic here. Let's see what this other one gave me from ChatGPT. And look at this, completely different, way more cinematic, way more of a different approach to what the other ones gave me. And from all the tests I've done so far, ChatGPT is definitely far more creative. I mean, look at this prompt and the details of this prompt compared to the prompts the other ones gave me. Even when I have ChatGPT write me poems or write me short stories, it does a better job than Bard and Bing only does a good job if you change the setting. So when you have a new topic and you have a conversation style, if you change it to more creative, you're going to get something that is going to be on the creative side. So if you want to do poetry, if you want to do things that ChatGPT I showed you that it's doing, you need to be on the creative tab. So this one is kind of nice because you could change the conversational style with the other ones you can, but you got to give it the text prompt. This one actually has a toggle to go in between. So in this case, ChatGPT wins with a five stars and Bing and Bard, I'm going to give only three stars. And I'll do a coding test just to show you the speed test. So I'm going to actually ask it to create a game for me that I could run on my computer. So GPT 3.5 is super fast. They actually spit out the code in maybe 10 seconds and then it wrote the rest in another 10 seconds. So in 20 seconds, he told me exactly what to do. And I actually told it I don't know anything about programming. So he told me exactly how to do it. He wrote me this code in Python. I could copy the code. And then he told me step by step exactly what to do. So where to get Python, how to download it, how to run it on different computers. I did this test, by the way, and I was able to run this simple guess the game or guess the number game in a couple minutes from getting this prompt and following it step by step. Now, GPT-4 is still going, right? So GPT-4 definitely gets the lowest score on speed, right? But this time is actually far more accurate against GPT-3.5 as far as the details that it's giving me. Now, Bard was the fastest. He actually gave me this whole output and the code's a bit longer. In maybe three seconds, I had this whole output and I got different versions of it too with a little bit more detail. But this one actually had a little bit issue with the details of the steps it gave me. So with Bard, I was not actually able to follow step by step when I followed the instructions. And on the Bing side, it looks like it actually gave me a follow up question. So I'm going to tell it you choose. And it's also creating the same guess the number game for me. So they all decided to the simplest game they could make is guess the number game, which again, in a couple minutes, you could run on your computer. And this one is giving you the code here that you could copy. But as you could see, it's again, just as slow as GPT-4, right? Because it's using the same engine here. So right now, Bard wins the test right now by far for speed. GPT-3.5 was fast, but not accurate. Bard also didn't give me the details step by step, but that is related to some of the other things we already scored. But when it comes to speed test, Bard definitely gets five stars. It's super fast, three seconds to get this whole code. And GPT-4, and being definitely way too slow, right? So they're going to get only three stars on this one. So at the time of this test right now, in all the five categories combined, I'll show you here on screen, bar definitely is on top, but it is changing very rapidly. They are literally changing this all the time. So I'll make sure I update this video every couple of months to see which AI model is coming up on top. And maybe Meta joins the race too. So this makes it a little bit broader of a race. And I'm also putting together an entire AI education platform, Netflix style platform, where you could watch everything in the world of AI as they get released with complete courses, tutorials, download resources, and an entire community of AI enthusiasts. 
that is almost ready. Make sure you sign up in the link in the description of this video. I hope you found this useful and I'll see you next time.